All right. How would you like to sit down at church on Sunday and have your pastor or your priest tell you you're just too fat? Well, it's a message. My next guest has no problem telling his congregation. With us now is Pastor Steve Reynolds of the Capitol Baptist Church, where he started the Bod for God program. Pastor, good to have you. What made good you do this? With you. When did I lose the weight? No, what made you do this? Well, I've struggled with weight all my life. I uh, weighed actually over 100 pounds in first grade, and uh, up until about 15 months ago, I weighed 320 pounds. And I just felt the need in my own life to bring my belief system where I believe that I should take care of my body together with my behavior. And uh, the Bible says our bodies are made by God and for God. And uh, I just wanted to be obedient to what the Bible teaches. Well, a lot of folks, Pastor, might say, very good for you, Pastor, uh, commendable. You lost the weight. But what, why make those in your congregation feel guilty? Well, it's not about guilt. It's about actually not a negative emotion, but a positive emotion in helping people to feel good about themselves by providing the information and the inspiration they need to, to be healthy. So what do you tell them? Well, I tell them about my own struggle, first of all, that you know, I'm not in any position to judge anyone when it comes to, to weight. But uh, basically, I have taught them the four keys that I've used to lose over 70 pounds in the last 14 months. Okay, so you, 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 you're preaching to this chubby choir, and how do they respond? They responded great. There's been a very, very positive uh, uh, emotion towards the teaching, and people have come to hear the messages. It's been very, very positive. And are they losing weight? Yes. What about yeah, some, what, but what about some pastors in the congregation who might feel, hey, you know, I'm sorry, I'm fat, I, but I'm still religious, I'm still a decent person, and, and the pastor's all over me. Well, I'm sure there's people like that. And I tell people that I understand that a lot of you are going to hear these messages and not change because I was like that myself. So what if they don't and change? Are they any less loyal parishioners? No, I don't think so. I think, you know, you, you're not going to lose weight till you're ready to lose weight. So it's got to be coming from your heart. So would, would Jesus bother with whether you're fat or not? Well, I think Jesus would want us to, you know, to, the two basic things in the Bible are to eat less and exercise more. And I think Jesus would want us to take care of our bodies. He's well, he might, you know, I, I suspect he might want us to take care of our bodies. But I, I don't know if Jesus would care whether you were fat or thin or in between. Well, I think Jesus will love you and accept you uh, whether you're fat or thin or not. But he does want to give us life. And that's what he came to give us. And you're going to have a better quality of life and a longer life if you get healthy. All right, That's Pastor. really what's motivated me to do it. All right. Thank you very much, sir. Very good to have you. Thank you. Well, well the pastor preaches, the Snapple Lady reacts with us now is the woman you all know and love, Wendy Kaufman, the co-creator of WendyWear.com, of course, the Snapple Lady of fame. Uh, what do you make of that? You know, this is very bothersome, and I'm going to tell you why. This pastor, although it's a lovely idea, you know, to go into a group and lose weight, I believe just like there is a separation between church and state in this country, there should be a separation of God and weight. Because here's what's happening as far as I see. He is judging people with his preconception of what fat and overweight might be and the truth is is that you could be overweight and still be very very healthy and still take very good care of your body I am definitely overweight but you would never know by looking at me that I walked 45 flights of steps this morning and I kickbox for 50 minutes so I agree you take care of yourselves but I'm just concerned that he's paying so much more attention to what's on the outside and what about but, is but to be fair to him what if He's saying, when he look, if I can make you healthier on the outside, maybe you'll be focused on, on things that are healthy on the inside. But you can't get healthier on the outside until you feel better about yourself on the inside. Well, isn't what he's saying you will once you do start addressing the outside? Well, you know what? You can address a lot of things that you know but the point is is that some people don't feel that they want to lose weight but because I love going to a buffet meal does that negate the fact that I don't love God like what he was saying was that if you are in love let's just say with potluck and you are overweight because of it you don't love 
God as much as you love food. And that is my concern. And what's his end game? Because my concern also is if I was going to church down by where he was, and I knew because I've dieted and I've gained weight back over the past, what would happen? Let's just say I would go to church. Am I less worthy to go into his church? Because I have maybe failed. But what if he's prospect? addressing? I think you, you make a very, very good point. You know, point. We, we are created in all colors, shapes, and sizes, and man has weaknesses. We do, and you know what? We turn to Mine God. Mine are cannolis. <laughs> I don't know. But, and yodels. Wait a minute. Yodel. But but, but I, I see all your your great points, buddy. But if we have this obesity epidemic in our country, and and if you can find someone like the pastor who's saying, I can connect God to making you healthier, to making you happier. Um, and that can decrease the obesity epidemic in this country that's killing a lot of folks. Wouldn't that be net net a good thing? The point is, is that, you know, if people choose and people do in 12 step programs turn to God or a higher power to handle a problem in their life, I don't have a problem with that whatsoever. You just because, don't like him doing I it from the pulpit, like right? It because to me, it's almost very prejudiced. It's, it's him turning around and it's him being a heavy person in his life and pointing and who makes him the judge of what's healthy. But he was heavy not. himself. But that's okay. But that's what makes it worse because you see, for me, in weakness, you should be compassionate. What about some of these people that are going to fail at this task? And I'd like to meet him in another year and see whether he's kept up all of the weight loss that he has so done if he right hasn't, now. Then so the truth is, is God has is let that, him down. Is, is, has God let him down? Is it a God thing? I don't think it's a God thing. I think it's a people thing. And I think that people are flawed and we do the best that we can. But I'm very proud of the addictions that maybe I've accomplished in my life. Yes, but you've always said you'd problem. like I've to always... lose weight. A lot of us would, oh. but but you don't look at it as a religious battle. No, but I always know how much God loves me, and I know that God loves me despite that I weigh over 200 pounds. I know that because I have a wonderful relationship with my God, and I just think religion and spirituality are things that should enrich people's lives, and I think that it should make people feel safe. Not not scare them or manipulate them. Right. I just get nervous, Wendy, with people mixing religion and bakery products. And that, <laughs> that could be just me. Wendy, very good seeing you again, as always. Mwah. Wendy, and of course, the pastor. We'd love to have them both back.